Hi everyone, my name is Madeline Gardner. I am the external comms manager here at Jazz Lincoln Center. And thank you for tuning in for another episode of Jazz Intersections, a casual live Q&A where we have guests from all walks of life all intersecting at, you guessed it, jazz. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm gonna jump right into it today uh, to introduce our guest and bring her in here. I am delighted to introduce a uh, Brooklyn born artist with a creative fluidity spanning jazz, soul, experimental, and Haitian roots music. Through her music, Melanie Charles creates a space where traditional meets present time, blurring the lines between and among social classes, cultures, genders, and theories to create a world where posing elements can coexist. Sign me up, I wanna live in that world always. Uh, Charles graduated from the New School for Jazz and Contemporary Music with a BFA in Vocal Jazz Performance, and she has worked with everyone from Herlin Riley, Ellis Marsalis, SZA, and the Gorillas, to name a few. And you can catch Melanie tonight, March 26th at 7.30 p.m. ET for Jazz Lincoln Center's live virtual concert, the premiere tonight, Voices of Freedom, alongside the Jazz Lincoln Center Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis and other special guest vocalists, Chanel Johns and uh, Ashley Pizzotti. Without any further ado, I would like to bring in the fantastic, maybe give us some, you know, thumbs up, fire emojis, whatever emojis you'd like. Warm welcome for Melanie Charles. gonna bring her in so give me one moment and also while we're waiting for Melanie to join why don't you uh, let us know what music you're listening to what you've been doing it's nice weather out what your plans are for today I'm nosy you know and here she is Hello! How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm so great. And let me just tell you, I've been watching uh, footage from rehearsal of the show tonight. You sound incredible. It is like, and I'm not just doing like the promo. You are absolutely incredible. I'm thank so excited you. to watch tonight. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> and I, want, I know that, you know, you just have like a big show tonight or whatever. So I'd love to kick things off. Yeah, uh, I'd love to start with if you can kind of tell us about your journey with music, uh, jazz in particular. I know that you had originally studied opera and then yeah. changed to jazz. So if you can tell us about that and maybe some uh, inspirational people, mentors you've had along the way. Yeah, I love that. I went to LaGuardia High School and I was a flute major. And um, I also was studying classically. Um, and it was senior year, it was time to start doing auditions. And I got a call back at Juilliard. Um, but I was also, you know, just getting into jazz. Um, mm. Kevin Blanc, the big band, um, the jazz big band director of LaGuardia High School, let me do Daydream. That was like the first jazz tune I sang. Um, nice so beautifully um and so i was just exploring that and with the opera teacher at juilliard they do these little like pre call back meeting kind of things mm -hmm. and she was like you know i think you should just do jazz like i don't think you should go this opera route and you know at the time all my friends and family were like wow that was so discouraging and negative but to be honest with you it was the biggest blessing for mm. me because jazz has literally been my best friend, the gate to like so many wonderful opportunities and travel. And I know that if I went the opera route that all of these things that has ha have been happening for me would not have happened. And mm. I'm grateful for my training because honestly, I'm so comfortable vocally in anything that I do because of my classical training. So it all kind of, you know what I mean, worked out. And I auditioned to for the sure. school and I got in and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> That is, you know, and it's it's a lot like I know uh, Isaiah J. Thompson, who's an amazing piano player. He studied classically before too, and it's like you can hear, especially in the style that when you're singing, you can hear the training, but it's also the soul that comes through. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And speaking of singing tonight, as I mentioned before, yeah. we have a tonight's premiere, and it'll be streaming through uh, March. 
thir I have it here, March 31st, um, uh, will be the premiere tonight and it's live. We're doing it live. Yeah. This is not pre recorded, it is live. Yeah. Voices of Freedom, Betty Carter, Billie Holiday, Abby Lincoln, Nina Simone, just some of the girls, just, just casual. Just all the homies. You know, just you know. <laughs> And this streaming concert, what's so special about this too, is this is the first live appearance that the JLCO with Winton since at, at, the, at the House of Swing since February 2020, which is kind of nuts. And uh, what's so special, you know, I, I, I read in a little article that it's kind of a full uh, circle moment for you. You mentioned that you uh, watched Winter Marcellus's instructional, instructional uh, videos when you were in high school. In you junior talk a bit about high that? school, yeah. I love it. My band teacher, Mr. Hakeem, used to play Winton's videos about like jazz, like breaking it down, like every band class, like that's how we, he introduced class, you know? And then, you know, when I got to college, I went through this rebellion phase and I hope Winton doesn't see this, but I went on a rebellion and I was like, Winton, he, he not about the real jazz. He's about the like bougie institutional jazz, right? <laughs> and then fast forward to, <laughs> Yesterday in rehearsal, um, Winton was kind enough and said, come to my office. I want to work on these changes with you. Mm -hmm. And he broke them down in a way that totally changed up my whole understanding about what he is about and how he approaches and interacts with music. Like, mm -hmm. my mind is blown. So it literally is full... <laughs> circle all the phases is it almost like out of body like is it are you how do you stay present you're like all right you know what i what i this is a good question because i've been nervous since i booked this job it, it was about over a year ago i've been nervous since i signed the contract right so you know i'm a buddhist and so i've been trying to like chant and meditate every mm -hmm. day so that i'm spiritually prepared and then also once we get into the music I find that if I lean into the stories that I'm telling and if I mm. find refuge in the words that, you know, there's no room to be worried about, you know, who's watching, who's listening, because I'm here to, to tell a story. So that's how I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> I love that. I mean, you know, there's such a line with, you know, spirituality and music and like, you know, performing because you're standing there. And I mean, I'd love to hear what it's also like to be back on stage a year, over a year into this pandemic and with a big band at that, you know, how, what does that feel like for you? Yeah, it feels amazing. You know, when, once, you know, I feel like I keep going back to my new school days, but when I was in the new school, I had a seven piece band called The Journey. And it was like rhythm section plus three horns and guitar. Mm, and like that was my I love thing. It. And then I went totally left and I started experimenting with samplers and like sort of doing more like mm. one woman show type of things for a while. And, and it was going pretty well, and it still is going well. I'm loving it. But I found myself during the pandemic missing that natural conversation mm. between myself and the instruments. And so going back to the roots of actual other musicians is really enjoyable. And then a big band at that. I mean, yeah. the sound is so huge and, like, so soulful that's like the biggest thing that i'm taking away from this i think we have this this very like classical like like european idea of jazz sometimes right when we're when you're doing it in such a prestigious stage you know what i mean mm -hmm. but you know it, it really is just soulful music you know it really absolutely is <laughs> um so that was good. And all the guys in the band are so generous with information, like sharing stories about Betty and like what it was like being in her band. And oh. It's just beautiful. Are you are you just are you feeling her when you're on stage? And can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect tonight and what you'll be singing and and whatnot? <laughs> what story you'll be telling? Yeah, I'm going to be the first. I'm opening the show um, with um, Tight yes. uh, by Betty Carter. And, you know, the story is easy to tell because basically she's talking about how she can't find a man. And to be honest with you, I can't seem to find a man either. So anyone's watching who's in Can anyone? Available. Um, Please go ahead and comment below uh, your social security number, what you do for a job. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> so that story is easy for me to tell. Um, but mm -hmm. the, you know, they're like, okay, Molly, we want you to scat. And so I'm putting my big girl britches on to try and hit those changes. Then we're doing a little bit of Nina Simone. I'm singing Mr. Backlash, which is a fun oh. tune that she wrote. Yeah. And Marcus Prince have made that arrangement and it's really a beautiful arrangement. And then also I have to say that the other ladies are so amazing. Chanel Johns mm -hmm. and Ashley Pizzotti, she is incredible. They both are really amazing. And um, it's been a pleasure hearing um, Chanel do Freedom Day, um, oh. you know, breathing life into Abby Lincoln's material. And and um, Ashley's doing drop-in things. That's the finale of the show. And mm. it's, it's just like, we all are being challenged musically. So we're all like leaning into each other, but we also really admire all of our different individual vibes. Mm. It's just a huge love fest. <laughs> that is a, so beautiful and so powerful too, right? And anyone who's tuning in, uh, we're talking about the concert tonight that Melanie is a part of, that we're very excited. Uh, you can go to Jazz Out or get tickets to find out more information. And I wanted to ask you something too, on these amazing female vocalists and being a vocalist yourself, I mean, so much more, you know, obviously, but what is it what does it feel like being a vocalist in a genre that is primarily known being instrumental and what does that mean to you how have you taken that into your music and portrayed that well actually i i have instrumentalists as well i play flute right. and piano and so that has been a support to my singing um i think this is a great question because i think that you know yeah it is mostly an instrumental and male heavy um, genre. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the few vocalists that do break through, the killing ones actually play instruments. So like Betty Carter can move her pianist, could move her pianist off stage and play for her, you know? Right. And um, I feel like there's a lot of um, power to that. And it, it gives you a sense of comfort because you know musically what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I have to acknowledge there are vocalists who may not necessarily play instruments and that doesn't remove from their skill set or how amazing they are. It's just a different bag, if you will. Right. Um, but, you know, also, I think this year we've been talking about a lot about women in jazz and a lot of these festivals now, they have these quotas they want to fill. You got to have, you know, three black girls. You know what I mean? It's like definitely a political thing mm. in that way. And, you know, when we think about like Alice Coltrane, Alice mm. Coltrane was amazing because she was amazing, period. Yeah. Not because she was a woman that was, you know what I mean? And yeah. I would like us to just get back to that if we can, like mm. the music. It's just so easy to lose sight and, and like think about other things because we're human. Um, but um, yeah. I think the more the more I've leaned into the music, the more the issue of male, female, instrumentalist, all of that stuff sort of has, mm. you know, faded away in the background. If that, I don't know if that made sense. No, it doesn't. I mean, it's when you're making honest music. And did, did you ever find that, hard, you know, being a professional musician, I know I talk a lot of my friends with profess, professional musicians that mm -hmm. like, they don't lose themselves, but how do you balance, you know, getting that gig, doing what you need to do to, to have this as a career, but also being honest to yourself musically? Ooh, great question. I mean, I was lucky that, you know, my mom, I talk about my mom all the time. Everyone who knows me knows I'm like my mom. I worship my mom. She always really encouraged me to do to do me and to mm -hmm. and to be honest not only in the music but in my everyday life so this is something that has always been ingrained in me and then also because I was born and raised in New York City and I was part of all these like music like New York music programs like Harlem School of the Arts and I did like talented teens like this this like beauty pa pageant Hal Jackson talented teens it was a huge thing in New York back in the day like and all of those programs really nurtured people us to to be real and authentic mm -hmm. it's like sort of part of the new york music art education thing at least when i was growing up um so that's always been the way i've moved it's so crazy when i look back at the things i've done like when i was at LaGuardia, i was like i want to write an arrangement for orchestra and i'm going to play piano and sing and i did it i arranged mm. for an orchestra and you know and it was just always like whatever lofty ideas um i had i was always encouraged to do them um and then also the pandemic sort of 
helped rearrange um, what's important. I feel like before the pandemic, jazz musicians were creating music in order to book a gig. Like, mm -hmm. I need to get a dope album. I'm going to record my album, and then I'm going to send it to all the festivals, and, and I'm going to book my, my summer fest, you know? And I find that it, it, it made the music lacking of message, of a mm. sense of coherence, um, storytelling, like all of those things were not there in a lot of jazz albums. But I mm. feel that now, because no one's focusing on trying to book no festivals, we're here, there's nowhere else to go. Uh, what's a festival fucking... again? Uh, I don't, I've never heard of her. Festival. You know what I mean? Well, how's she doing? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think that has helped me sort of, and I think all of mm. us, I think collectively, all musicians can say that um, the pandemic has has forced us to get back to the reality. If we're not touring, who are you? Mm. If you're not booking this gig, what is your life? You know, these are the, the, the deep questions that we all have been asking. So yeah, well, for sure. Like whether, you know, whether we wanted it at all, we've had a year of therapy, like wh whether you want, signed up for it or, or not, you know, staring us in the face, which hopefully it benefited most when they, when people that could soak that in. Yeah. And I, I love to ask this question on this kind of this note as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have a piece of advice that you wish you could give to uh, yourself, a younger version of yourself when you first started out that maybe someone uh, listening, watching can kind of soak in? Hmm. That's a really good question. I know it's kind of deep. It is a deep question. You're asking a lot of deep questions, actually. In my life. Listen, okay. it's about um, jazz intersections, deep questions, all right? Yeah. Deep cuts. <laughs> I mean, I think that, hmm. hmm. We can I come mean, back to this if you want to soak it in. Something that, because I'm trying to think of something that I didn't mm. know, you know? But totally. something that, helped me and so I would encourage this in my younger self is to do do my own thing. I mm. would, you know, encourage my younger self to lean into what it is you want to do and not be distracted by what Joe Schmo, what right. po what popular culture is saying, what your t even what your teachers are saying sometimes. Like trust trust that that inner voice. And yeah, I, I think that that would be what I would say. Just trust I love yourself because we know all the answers. We really mm -hmm. do. Be you. Do you? Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, and it's hard. I have to feel like I have to convince my friends sometimes when I'm trying to help me. You know, the best version of yourself lives right inside there. As long as you're honest to yourself, doing your thing. It's a yeah. beautiful piece of advice. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. And I mean, we are, speaking of pandemic, we are like over a year into it. There's obviously a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank goodness. But how, you know, we're not there yet. We're getting there. What, uh, what has uh, brought you hope and, and happiness throughout the pandemic? What have you been doing, held on to, look forward to? Um, what's brought me hope is um, connecting with my family. Mm -hmm. um, building a really healthy relationship with them. You know, family dynamics can be hard in life, period. And, you know, I, I was always, I've been touring a lot before the pandemic. So now being more um, stationary has really strengthened us. Um, uh, what brings me hope is, you know, I, I recently signed a deal. I'm not going to say with who, it's a secret. <sighs> Um, but it's congratulations. Been, That's so exciting. Thank you. It's, um, it's like my dream. Um, and it, it, the thing is, like, even though the pandemic happened, the, the, the momentum has continued for me. Mm. And I give thanks. Uh, it's not even on no ego or cockiness. I know that it's something bigger than me. And so I'm just trying to be obedient to what the Lord or the universe, whatever y'all mm. want to call it, um, to remain true to myself and to what I have been gifted with and to honor that. Um, so, yeah, the you know, the... There's a lot um, that I'm grateful for, and that keeps me in a positive mindset. And I've released, I've released the things that I mm. thought I wanted. That's that no longer serve you. That's beautiful. It's so hard that I congratulations. That is a hard thing to do, and especially you know, as an artist, things that like things or like goals or stuff you think you want, you're like, this is that's not that's not it. It changes so drastically. It. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. And I also want to let anyone know we're almost at time here, but if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I did see someone said that they were your man and also that they'll write your prenup for you, just so you know. So we'll go back. <laughs> I'll find them. We'll give them a little DM. Why, please help me out. <laughs> I don't know about the prenup, but we do appreciate some free legal advice always here on Jazz Intersections. <laughs> so please ask any, any questions there. And, and while people are uh, asking questions, I wanted uh, to take a second to ask you what you're working on, what's coming up, promote anything, let us in, or what do you want to chat about? Mm -hmm. I'm working on an album. It's supposed to be dropping in September. And it's really cool because a lot of the material is in alignment with the show that we're doing tonight, actually. Yes, I love um, that. So it's, yeah, it's so like crazy how that aligned. So that's coming soon. So stay tuned. Follow my Instagram, my Twitter. I share a lot of information and things that's, that's happening. Um, what else? You know, Melanie really, has an amazing tiny desk you can watch on YouTube. That was one of my favorite tiny desks. Oh, that was so powerful and beautiful. Thank you. Thank so you. Good. Yes, thank you. Matt. Please check out my tiny desk. Um, one of the tunes that I wrote is called The Dilemma, and I really as a single. It's available on my band camp. So please go to my, my band camp and purchase the single. Single and yes. <laughs> um, I've been making these really fun. I should I should have worn it. I've been making these really cool mix, and a lot of my friends have been loving that and wearing those. So let yes, me know we have a question. Also, want. let me know that we have oh, Miss Ashley P uh, Pizzotti in the chat. Ashley, Ashley <laughs> is a beast, and you can hear hey, Ashley, Ashley, Melanie, and Chanel tonight on Voices of Freedom. <laughs> Um, we have a question here. What's one piece of advice you'd give to a ranger composer for writing for flute? Mm, good idea. Good question. Um, I would say be mindful of the range um, mm. of the flute. Oftentimes, um, people may write a little lower, a little higher than what the flute um, actually can do. Um, I would say I ideally flute should always be at the top of the voicings um, um, because it mm. really cuts through be really beautifully. Um, yeah, I guess maybe be specific as specific as you um, communicate the kind of vibe that you're going for. I think that will help. That was definitely my boyfriend who asked that question too. So I'm going to make sure he listens to that information. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have any, hey, yeah. I, have, I have one more question too. We have, I have one more question to wrap things up. Do I? It's actually not in there. So I don't have another question, but I just want to give you all of my best. You are absolutely incredible. Like I said before, and I'm not just saying this, everyone tuning in right now. I watch footage from rehearsals for, for the show premiering tonight, Voices of Freedom at 7.30 p.m. ET. You can go to jazz.org and it sounds amazing. It's just it's the first time the JLCO and Winton have been uh, performing live in the House of Swing. And of course, we have a queen, Melanie Charles, there singing, getting you excited for the future. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. And I cannot wait to tune in tonight. Thank you, Maddie. Bye. <laughs>